Give time for PM to clarify Latifa's appointment. Water disruption in parts of Hulu Langat, KL and Petaling District. You're watching News on 2 with me, Renee Fong. PKR President Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim said that Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad should be given time to clarify the appointment of Latifa Bibi Koya as the new Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission MACC Chief Commissioner at the proper forums. Datuk Sri Anwar said the decision to appoint Latifa was made by the Prime Minister and that he only knew about it from the announcement on the appointment. According to Datuk Sri Anwar, matters that needed clarification included why the cabinet was not informed and that the appointment was allegedly not in line with the MACC Act and also violated the Pakatan Harapan Election Manifesto. Datuk Sri Anwar, who is the Member of Parliament for Port Dixon, said he had agreed to give the Prime Minister time and space to clarify the appointment at the proper platforms. Um, Beberapa perkara yang diperhatinkan termasuk soal seperti yang saya katakan janji manifesto dan juga tentang proses saya fikir boleh dibincangkan. He said this to reporters after attending a Hari Raya dinner at Masjid Kubang Semang in Permatang Pau, Pulau Pinang. Among those present were Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Dr Wan Azizah Wan Ismail, the Member of Parliament for Permatang Pau, Nurul Iza Anwar, Pulau Pinang Deputy Chief Minister Wan Datuk Ahmad Zakiuddin Abdul Rahman, among other state exco members. Datuk Sri Anwar also said Latifah's resignation as a PKR member had been accepted by the party, and it should not become an issue. Latifa was appointed as MECC Chief Commissioner effective 1st June, replacing Datuk Sri Muhammad Shukri Abdul, who decided to shorten his service contract. In a related development, Deputy Economic Affairs Minister Dr. Muhammad Razi Majidin said the appointment of Latifa Bibi Koya as the new Chief Commissioner of Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission MACC should not be an issue. He said this is due to the fact that the basis of the appointment of the former Executive Director of Lawyers for Liberty has been explained by the Prime Minister. Dr. Muhammad Razi, who is also the Information Chief of Parti Pribumi Bersatu Malaysia Bersatu, said Latifa should be given room to carry out her duties to the best of her ability. Bahawa beliau mempunyai asas-asas yang kukuh dalam melantik Latifa sebagai Ketua Pesurjaya SPRM. Dan kita perlu memberi sokongan kepada keputusan Perdana Menteri ke melantik beliau dan ini adalah sebagai daripada usaha reformasi untuk negara. Dr. Muhammad Razi said this to the media at an Idol Fitri event held in Keturi, Kota Baru, which was attended by over 5,000 local residents. The water supply in Hulu Langat, Kuala Lumpur and Petaling will be interrupted in stages after garbage clogged up the Sungai Langat water treatment plant during heavy rain. Syarikat Bekalan Air Selangor Senior Merhat Shabas said the production of treated water in the plant was affected following heavy rain at upstream and the large volume of accumulated rubbish at the intake caused the mechanical filtration equipment band screen to clog and trip. Statement late last night said the incident is expected to affect water supply in several areas in Hulu Langat, Kuala Lumpur, and Petaling region by stages. It added personnel are working to resolve this issue and minimize the impact of supply interruption to affected customers. Meanwhile, Ais Lango Sinan Berhad has assured that water tanks will be dispatched to the affected areas as restoration works are currently underway. Consumers may refer to Ais Lango's app and www shabas.com.my for their latest status, which will be updated from time to time. An Indonesian man was killed and four others injured when a fire broke out on a luxury boat at a boat repair facility in Bukit Malut, Langkawi early Thursday. Firefighters, with the help of the K-9 unit, found the 29-year-old's charred remains at 7.12pm. 
Langkawi Zone 4 Fire Authority Chief Fire Superintendent Muhammad Fazrullah Muhammad Noor said two supervisors and three firemen together with four dogs, each who control four dogs, were rushed to the scene upon receiving a distress call at 2.55 a.m. He added that they managed to put out the fire at around 8.25 a.m. Four Indonesian nationals, including a woman who were workers at the facility, were rushed to the Langkawi Hospital due to smoke in her injuries. Rescuers launched a search effort after being told that a worker was trapped in the fire. The search ended at 8.16pm last night after the victim's remains were sent to the same hospital for post-mortem. The body of a boy who reportedly drowned at Kuala Ibai Lagoon Park near the Interunganu yesterday morning was found later in the day. Jalan Kota Fire and Rescue Department Chief Abdullah Zawawi Muhammad said the body of the nine-year-old Muhammad Aidil Muhammad Ghazali was found at 4.48pm, about 300 metres from the location of the incident. It is believed that the victim, together with his siblings, were playing at the sandy edge before falling into the water in the 10.15 a.m. incident. Abdullah Zawawi said the body had been handed over to the police for further action. He added that Muhammad Aidil had gone to the park with his family upon their return from his mother's hometown at Kampung Tanjung in Johor Bahru in conjunction with Aidil Fitri. 23 firemen and 9 divers were involved in the search and rescue operation. Three in a family died in an accident involving a proton Wira and a proton Exora at Kilometer 15 Jalan Mersing and Dao Mersing, Johor, yesterday. In the 11.30 a.m. incident, the victims, Muhammad Safar Zakaria, 34, and his wife, Nurul Jana Talib, 29, who were still pregnant, died at the scene, while their four-year-old son, Muhammad Darwisi, died while receiving treatment at the Mersing Hospital. Mersing Police Chief Cyril Edward Nguyen said another two children of the dead couple who were seriously injured are being treated at the same hospital together with six passengers from the Proton Exora. It was believed that the Proton Wira driven by Mohamed Safar from Endau to Mersing lost control and skidded into the opposite lane to collide with the Proton Exora. The case is being investigated under Section 41, Subsection 1 of the Road Transport Act 1987. Cyril Edward advised the people to get sufficient rest before driving long distance to avoid getting into an accident. A 15-year-old boy died while his friend suffered severe injuries in an accident involving a motorcycle and a car at around 3 p.m. yesterday. The incident happened at Kilometer 7 Jalan Ibok Payo in Terengganu. The victim, Muhammad Adit Muhammad, died at the scene caused by severe injuries to his head and body, while his friend, Muhammad Hakim Shazwan Nur Mazni Shah, broke his right hand and leg. It is believed that the incident occurred when the victim, who was riding the motorcycle together with his friend, were travelling back home from Kampung Ibo to Kampung Payo after visiting a friend for Hari Raya. The motorcycle was said to have entered the opposite lane, causing it to crash into a car. Muhammad Adib was confirmed to have died at the scene. Kamaman Police Chief Superintendent Muhammad Syed Ibrahim, when contacted, said the incident is being investigated under Section 41, Subsection 1 of the Road Transport Act 1987. The victim's body was sent to the forensic unit of the Kamaman Hospital for post-mortem while his friend was hospitalised at the same hospital and is reported to be in stable condition. In other news, the Yang Dipertuan Agong Al-Sultan Abdullah Riayatuddin Al-Mustafa Bila Shah visited his father's Almarhum Paduka Ayahanda Sultan Ahmad Shah Al-Musta'in Bila grave at the Pekan Royal Mausoleum. He was also accompanied by the Raja Permaisuri Agong Tunku Azizah Aminah Maimuna Iskandaria. The Yang Dipertuan Agong was also joined by the Sultana of Pahang, Sultana Hajah Kalsum, Tengku Arif Temenggong Pahang, Tengku Abdul Fadu Muazzam Shah and other Pahang royalties. He arrived at the Royal Mausoleum at 5.55pm and was greeted by the State Assembly Council members. Others who were there were Pahang Islamic Religious and Malay Customs Councils Mu'im, Deputy President Datuk Sri Wan Abdul Wahid Wan Hassan and state leaders. The reciting of the Yasin 
Yasin and Tahlil was done by the Pahang Mufti Datuk Sri Dr. Abdul Rahman Osman. Sultan Ahmad Shah 88, the fifth Sultan of Pahang who ruled the state for 45 years, died at the National Heart Institute at 8.50am on 22nd May. On the local front, a software known as WOMS, which uses Internet of Things IoT and Artificial Intelligence AI to manage raw water supply efficiently and handling unsuccessful water issues, has been recently introduced into the market. Infrastructure and Viral Water Management Syndrome Berhad, IEWM Executive Director Dr. Muhammad Shazwan Gobi, said that the Sharia compliance software is the first of such software to be introduced in the country. Dr. Mohamed Shazwan said the software is especially introduced for water management companies nationwide. The company is now working together with the Labuan Water Supply Department to study its water supply situation and to plan a pilot project with the Selangor Water Company. Internet of Things sahaja tidak boleh menyelesaikan masalah uh, smart water grid. Okay? Dia tidak akan menyelesaikan. Dia kena ada bersama dengan artificial intelligence. Okay. Untuk mendapat maklumat-maklumat terperinci setiap minit, setiap saat. Setiap saat AI ini akan memberikan maklumat yang tepat. Okay. Di mana ada punca uh, leaking, punca kebocoran air di sesaluran pipe. The software is tailored to existing smart water grid networks including piping, home meters and dams. WOMS is a technology from Korea and went through the patent process in Malaysia. Dr. Mohamed Shazwan said this when met by RTM in Bukit Jalil, Kuala Lumpur. Three Lions out of Nations League after defeat to Netherlands. That's in sports. Malaysia's football head coach Tan Cheng Ho has asked his charges to be prepared to change their gameplay and adjust to the conditions of the pitch at the Bukit Jalil National Stadium when they play Timor Leste tonight. With frequent heavy rain the past few days having worsened the pitch condition, the 51-year-old coach asked the Harimau Malaya players to be flexible in their strategies to secure a win in the first round of the 2022 World Cup 2023 Asian Cup joint qualification first leg match. Despite Malaysia being the favourites, the former Kedah tactician warned his charges to be wary of their opponents tonight, which has a mixture of experienced and young players from the under-23 squad to the 2018 Asian Games and AFF Championship besides a dangerous strike force. For the past four weeks, uh, the, the team had been uh, good preparation and I, I seen players also uh, very committed in training and of course uh, last uh, on the 2nd of June we have a very good uh, test match against Nepal and uh, uh, we have to continue to play the way we are playing and at the same time uh, we cannot uh, overconfident uh, play against Timor Leste. Cheng Ho spoke in a pre-match press conference at the National Stadium in Bukit Jalil yesterday. Timor Leste head coach Norio Tsukita, meanwhile, has applauded the Malaysian team ahead of their 2022 World Cup 2023 Asian Cup joint qualification first leg match tonight. The 59-year-old Japanese coach came with full of praises for the Harimau Malaya squad during the pre-match press conference. Uh, that's why uh, we start training uh, before one week. Uh, Tomorrow game, not so easy, but uh, do our best. And uh, maybe players do something tomorrow. <laughs> we'll try. Uh, please do your best. For the record, Timor Leste have never won against Malaysia, having lost 0-1 and 0-3 twice and tied 1-1 during their four clashes in the previous World Cup and Asian Cup qualifiers. And that concludes this afternoon's News on 2. In our top story, give time for PM to clarify Latifa's appointment. Join us again at 7 this evening. I'm Renee Fong. Thanks for watching and have a pleasant afternoon. Yeah. <laughs>